Coming up this week on Archer's Choice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my word. Welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. Choice. Again, where are we going? We're going to Winterhawk Outfitters up in Colorado in the Flat Top Wilderness. With Larry Amos, Larry and Laura. That's right. Larry, he loves to pick on you. Oh yeah, but it's you know great. Larry, I I've been really nice all these years and I haven't really picked on you, but wow, all that gray hair. <laughs> At least he has hair. Oh. Oh, why don't you just jump on the bandwagon with Larry? Well yeah, I will, no problem. Hey. This week we are going to elk hunt out there though with Larry and Laura and Chet and Kevin and Tony. And yep. They're going to have a lot of fun out there, and it's funny because you can see them sucking air up there in those mountains. Everybody sucks air if you're I not know. from there. I mean, exactly. you know, you're talking about high elevations. And Lucky Logo, well, yes. his real tree. That's right. So you got to watch for the real tree logo, and we'll tell you what to do with that at the end of the a show. A real tree allows you to disappear in any condition. Any there you situation. go again, Mr. PR marketing yes, guy. Real yeah. Tree. Maybe that you should try that instead of what you're doing this for a living. This is Real Tree Max 1. Does that count? Yes. For the Lucky Logo? No. Oh, just checking. We got lots to show you though, so should we get going? Let's go bugling bulls in Colorado. We just pulled in and we're in Eagle, Colorado. We're gonna go in and get our elk tags. Now that is why you come to Colorado to see mule deer crossing the river. Get, you get up in the mountains and, and you're driving on a very narrow path. You go over these giant boulders and your truck is just, you know, you're, you're definitely in four wheel drive. This is not something you're gonna take a minivan up to. So, you know, we're going and we're taking our time creeping over these big, big rocks and it just puts you into perspective of how much of a, a wilderness situation you're, you're in. You look down both sides and you think, man, if we go off this, it's not gonna end up in a good way. We pull into camp and, and immediately Larry Amos comes out and introduces himself and, uh, and we get to talking and we get to cutting up immediately, hit it off. So he takes us over and, and, and we're able to get in our tent and we get things set up and, and kind of get, make it our little home for the week. New elk target, we're real excited to get it set up, stick an arrow in it. All right, I'm gonna watch you guys do the work. Oh. Rail them in. Hammer. Ate a little bit of lunch. We're putting our Mackenzie Delta Elk target up. And uh, we're gonna go get our bows out, maybe do a little shooting this afternoon. Kinda gonna take it easy today and get all prepped up for tomorrow morning. We're gonna head out and uh, hopefully get this thing done. Go. Welcome to Winterhawk Outfitters. In Colorado's Flat Tops Wilderness. Right, Shouldn't be luck. a problem. Good luck, brother. Good luck to you too, man. Right Let's make it happen. We started Winterhawk Outfitters in 1982. Our intent was to build a full-time professional organization. Our goal here at Winterhawk Outfitters has been since day one is to run a high-quality, traditional, elk hunt, deer hunt in the high country of Colorado. We strive real hard on producing a truly wilderness horseback canvas and leather experience for the hunters. I went on my first elk hunt in 1997 and ever since then I've been hooked on going out west. I've had many encounters with elk but I've never actually got to close the deal. To go out west and to be prepared for it from a flatlander back here in Missouri um, it's, it's pretty difficult on your body from altitude sickness and um, dehydration, um, staying out all day. It's, uh, it's one of those things though that th that preparation is what keeps me going. Welcome, Welcome back. back to the Archer's Choice. 
Who's my turn? It's Kevin. Okay. He's on the flat tops with Harley. That's right, Harley's filming, and they do a great job at filming the whole adventure. And they packed in. Yeah, they, they did. They did a heck of a hunt, and it's that moment of truth Kevin's been waiting for for I don't know how many years. No, let's see what happens. Ooh, Kev, Harley. We found a bunch of fresh elk signs. We kind of just uh, called to the blind just to see if we couldn't get anything worked up, and we've got a bull down below that's bugling. So we're gonna stay to the right side of this little um, aspen meadow, get down on his level, see if we can't pull him around to us. Feel good about it? This is just like Gary's bull last year, but both sides. Um, my pin was dead on him when I squeezed. I don't. The trick was is it was tight because he was gonna he was gonna come up there. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Here's my arrow. Oh man. There's not a bit of fuzz on there. No, that was a clean miss. At that moment, when I picked up the arrow and realized that there wasn't a drop of blood on it, everything that I had thought that happened didn't. I went from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. It, it just took everything out of me. It's, it was like, man, we, all of us have to start all over again. The one opportunity that I was presented I didn't capitalize on. You just sit there with disbelief that something that you worked so hard for and prepared so long for just gets to walk away. And if anybody has ever missed anything, you know exactly how I feel. I bet my pin was dead on that branch and I couldn't see it. Because all I could see was this. And I'll bet you any amount of money, this could have been in a shadow or anything, and my pin right on it. Earning our stripes. And he says, what did he say? As long as they're on your sleeves and not in your shorts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As many of you venture, you know, on, on bigger game, for, for example, moose and elk, and a bigger bone structure, what you want to remember is you might want to decrease the cutting surface of your broadhead to increase your penetration. For example, if, if a lot of us, there's my favorite head. It's called the Spitfire. Love it. Love it. Well, the thing is, is I, I'd shoot this all day long for elk, but I will not shoot the Spitfire with my particular draw length and my kinetic energy for moose. What I will do is I will step down to maybe the Hellraiser. Why a fixed blade cut on contact will increase my penetration, especially on a thicker bone, thicker hided animal. So next time you're going for one of your bigger animals, you might want to check your broadheads, check your kinetic energy, and you will become more successful in field. That's your Bowhunting World Tip of the Week.
welcome back the Archer's Choice. Oh, Kev, boy, do we feel your pain. Uh, you know what, the difference between a camera angle and the hunter's angle is amazing. You know, Harley's got lots of branches in his way, but Kevin's got that pocket, and the unfortunate part is that 20 yard pin is right where that branch was at, and that's what he hit at 20 yards. Not realizing the bowl, well, he knew the bowl well, was further. Yeah, but. well, when you see the shot, you see that branch deflect, and like, yep. ooh. And the create, well, you know, Kev, you gotta look at, always try to turn a negative into a positive, and let's just say, um, that was truly a branch antlered bull. That's mean. Sorry. Did they trail the bark? Yeah. Hey, let's join Chet now. He's back up with Larry. <laughs> wow. He and Tony are out there trying to find an elk. Let's see what happens. Check out the steep elevation those guys are at. That's what this is all about. Morning, gentlemen. Morning. Morning. It's 3 a.m. We've got a two-hour horseback ride, and then we're going to do a couple-mile hike, and uh, hopefully we can get on some milk this morning and see what happens. You get done eating your breakfast, go out, you get on the horses, and you begin your journey. Uh, and it's something I'll never forget. It's pitch black. You cannot see your hand in front of your face. And all you can hear, you can hear those horses and they're walking on that mountain. You see the stars and the stars look like you can reach up and touch them. But as the day breaks, you can start seeing those horses ears and you can start seeing a little bit of where you're at. And uh, this is a three hour ride that you, you take every morning to get to your hunting location, to be able to ride that horse in the Rocky Mountains itself is is a part of the hunt that that's very special we're here and let the guide hopefully get us on some elk this morning so where are we headed brother well we're gonna head up here on the south side of the creek here um the elk are not real vocal just yet but they're they're working into it they're kind of in a pre-rut stage right now so a lot of it'll be uh getting in there doing a little bit of cow calling and try to get something to, to answer to us and work off of that um, and just go from there maybe if we spot something try to work towards them so. okay sound like a plan man all right Dan let's do it most beautiful country I've ever seen in my life. Our horses are in that clearing. Tied up them trees down there. It may not look very far, but trust you and me, it is. And straight up a mountain. We got a couple cows, and there was another one. We're not sure what, what it was. The one just swirled. I can feel it hit me in the back of my head right to him, and they took off up the hill. The wind was blowing perfect, and I mean, it just flipped on him. We're gonna try to sneak down there and sneak around. As soon as we get up there, Dan hits the cow call a couple times just to see if we can locate this bull. The very first time that he hit that cow call, that bull bugled. So the plan was Dan is gonna get up over the, over the top of the mountain and I'm kinda of gonna get on the side here and get behind some of these small pines. Dan got up about 35, 40 yards past us and he hit that cow call again and that bull made a beeline straight for him. Stay tuned to see if Jack could close the deal. Good job.
he is down right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my word. God. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Dan. 30 bills, baby. He's right there. Oh my word. We. Oh. Get up here. We spot him down on the bottom. Dan says, get set up right here. We do. Dan gets up over the hill right there, calls. We kill that elk right there, and he's laying right down there. Chip shot. Yes! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Ralph and Vic. My emotions are just running rapid. Pegged him. I pegged him. How far? 30 yards. Son, I can't believe this. Let's go get our hands on that elk. Here it is, right here. Here it is, right here. Well, I think I got some good blood. Oh, praise God, man. He is down. Well, we got up this morning pretty early, three o'clock, and uh, knew the game plan. Grab a little breakfast, <clears throat> pack all our gear on the horses, and head out. And uh, that's what we did. We had about a three mile horseback ride this morning in the dark uh, in Colorado. Moon shining, stars out. It was amazing. But uh, Dan had a plan. We got up here. <clears throat> we heard this elk bugle down below. And Dan said, let's, let's circle around. We're going to have to climb this mountain. It's going to be real rough, but we're going to do it. We sat up. He come up. We ranged it. It was 20, it was uh, 30 yards. And uh, we drilled him, brother. What a job. Golly. I'm telling you what, my, my emotions are just about as high as they could be right now. Okay, well, they went out to get the horses in, so just take your good old time. And, and uh, they'll be there shortly. Into a beautiful day. Started at three o'clock this morning and uh, killed a really nice elk. Dan, yep. thank you, sir. Now you're done. Okay. Worked out like it should. Woo, Chad! Way to go, that buddy. That was pretty cool. That, that's, that's a team effort, and the guys nailed it. I no mean, doubt. did you hear? After he shoots that bull, and it goes off and starts running, and you can hear him. He's like, Yeah, you <laughs> And he's getting, I'm waiting for the brown paper bag to come out because I thought he was going to hype the vent away. Okay, because he wasn't hiking, he was standing still. No, he was standing still. So he he was, just, you can hear his, he's starting to get pounded, his, his blood, his adrenaline. But that's everything. what it's about. You know, so, so many shows today, people want to, don't want to show that. They don't want to show that they're human. We're all human. That's share right. that experience and share that emotion. If you cry, cry. If you're happy, happy. Whatever it feels, you have to release it. If you're that. miserable, be miserable. Hey, Larry, Laura, wow. thank you guys so much for having our guys up there again. Winterhawk Outfitters, it's a great place if you want to do a true wilderness elk hunt out in Colorado, horseback, wall tents. Every time we send guys out there, we come home with elk. They're, they're filling the freezer cool. and filling the wall. I mean, That's I mean right. you guys are great. And, and there's a true outfitter that when they say they're going to do something, they go beyond. That's right. Next week, head up to week, Alberta. Don Lynn, South Bear Peace down. Outfitters, Alberta, That's Black right. Spring Black Bear, Z. And me. Really? Yeah, Z and me. You sure? Yeah. Lucky logo? Real tree. Yeah, what was it? Real the tree. logo. Just making sure. Yes, okay. Real tree. Log on to archerschoice.com, click on the lucky logo button, fill out some information. Someone's going to win blend. some great stuff from Real Tree and other manufacturers. Lots of good stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's show. See you, see you next week, same time. Same channel, right here on the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice. You, you <laughs> just totally, you totally like, <laughs> just like you shop. <laughs> I'm going to go, I got to go.